Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this no nonsense video, I'm gonna go over Sony ZV-E10 lens options worth considering depending on your needs. Now, as you can see here, I have a whole bunch of lenses here that I have in the lab. And I just wanna show you visually how these lenses are different when I strap them to the Sony ZV-E10. So let me start by just mounting up each lens and showing you how it looks in the studio here using the various lenses so you can actually see for yourself visually. You know what I'm saying? So this video is about 30 minutes, which is kind of long, but below you can actually click the timestamps in the description area and you can just skip ahead to the lens that you might be interested, for example, if you don't want to watch the whole thing through. So don't forget there's those shortcut links down below. All right, so first we have the kit lens here. Now this is the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. It has a variable aperture of 3.5 to 5.6. So let's mount it up here to the Sony ZV-E10. And if you've never changed lenses before, guys, there's a white dot here on the lens flange and there's a white dot on the lens. And you just gotta line those up and then it'll go in. You just twist it and it locks on there. So this is the pancake lens and notice when you turn it on how it grows in size. So this is what the lens looks like when in use and you can zoom it in and out with the zoom lever. So you have a variable range of 16 millimeter to 50 millimeter. All right, so I got the camera all mounted up on the little mini tripod here and let me show you what the total kit weighs. So right there, we're looking at 22.1 for this setup, as we see here with the kit lens. So it's a very lightweight overall package. All right, so I got the lens mounted up on the Sony ZV-E10 here. And so there's a lot of factors to consider when trying to get a lens for your camera. Now, one of the most important, in my opinion, is cost. So this kit lens actually goes for $300 if you wanna buy it on its own, but if you get it with the ZV-E10, it's only $100. So it's the most affordable option out there and it's fairly versatile with the 16 to 50 millimeter range. Let me show you what I mean. If I zoom in here, this is 16 millimeters. So watch when I zoom in. So right there is about 33 millimeter and now I'm at 50 millimeter. So you can see how much tighter of a view 50 millimeter is when it comes to, you know, compared to 16. So that's what you get with this kit lens. You get a nice versatile range and you know, it works fairly well, but because it's so affordable, you can hear the zoom, for example. Like if you're recording on camera, you can hear that zoom motor. And it's at 16 millimeter, and I'm just walking here so you can see how the stabilization is working. This is just optical stabilization. Now, let me turn on active so you can see the difference. All right, so now I have the active on and you can see how much more of a crop it has. So it's much tighter to my face is what I mean when I say crop. And uh, you know, but it does work significantly better. So now I have it on a gimbal and you can see how it just looks like butter smooth footage. The difference is night and day guys. So this is really why, uh, you know, you want a gimbal. It's like a game changer. how it's not focusing on the product and that's because I'm too close to the lens so you need to back up further right about there so that's the minimum focus distance now also notice the background separation isn't the greatest because the aperture isn't as fast on a kit lens like this so let me switch lenses and I'll show you exactly what I mean all right, so just to give you a closer look at what the aperture diaphragm looks like, I'm just holding my old school Minolta lens here. And watch when I turn the manual aperture ring. You can see the diaphragm inside the lens actually closing down, just like your eye's pupil. So this is an f1.4 to f16 lens, and right there is wide open, f1.4. So I just want to mention the sponsor of this video is, uh, well, that's going to be you guys. You guys are the sponsor of this video because without you, 
I would not have this channel. Um, I just hit 100,000 subscribers and I'm so happy of that milestone and that is thanks to you guys. Uh, you guys are the ones that go down into the description area and click those affiliate links, which really helps me out. You guys are the ones that hit that thumbs up button and subscribe button, so thank you. So now I have the new Sony 11 millimeter f 1.8 lens and let me mount that up and show you. So yeah, this is a little bit more at about 25 ounces. So now this is an ultra wide angle lens. So, you know, 16 millimeter compared to 11 millimeter, you can see just how much more of the studio you can see. The camera's in exactly the same spot it was before. Also note the faster aperture is gonna result in a nice depth of field in the background. So if I put this up in front and it focuses on this lens, you will see the background will get blurry. And watch when I lower the aperture. It's actually at f3.5 right now. So now it's at f1.8, so watch this. See that? You can see the background, it's super blurry now. You, can't, you couldn't really achieve that with the kit lens. It just wasn't really an option because the aperture isn't as fast. So again, this lens goes for more money. It's ultra wide angle, so you're kind of paying for that ultra wide angle view. And it has that fast f1.8 aperture, which again is what gives you that depth of field separation that you can see right like that. So if you're holding products up and stuff or you're vlogging, you know, if you're using a gimbal, something like this, for example. So you can see here how much better this looks, in my opinion. So you got super wide angle, 11 millimeter, no active stabilization on there, so we're using the whole sensor with no crop, as you can see. And uh, it looks awesome, and you can see how buttery smooth it is. You could also do cool stuff like this with the gimbal. You can get real low, which is so much fun. So I'm recording in 4K 24p right now, but I'm about to switch it to 1080 because I want to get 120p footage so I can slow it down. All right, I just showed up at Flintlock and pre-ride, re-ride, and then free ride. So I've been on this trail a couple times already, so I'm gonna hit it pretty hard. six for this footage here. Do a little window shopping here. It's like a nice gallery. Got some nice pictures in there. All right, next we have another new lens from Sony and this is the 15 millimeter f 1.4 g lens now this is a really high quality lens it has that g badge so it has this custom button you can use and you can change that setting for a variety of things it has the autofocus manual focus switch it also has the aperture ring a manual aperture ring which is a feature you may or may not want and these are the types of things that you get with higher quality lenses all right it looks like the 15 millimeter is weighing in at about 26 ounces total so here's what the 15 millimeter f 1.4 looks like and as i was saying before you know things that matter are size and weight cost price things like that you know they're all factors now in this case this lens is a g badged lens so it has better optical quality so you're going to see less distortion uh, a little bit sharper image it's going to look more crisp 
the contrast should look a little better, meaning uh, the colors will be a little bit more rich straight off the camera as opposed to a cheaper kit lens. All right, so now here is the 15 millimeter f1.4 G lens on the gimbal. So you can see what it looks like. Now my arm is extended, so it's not as wide of a view as the 11 millimeter, of course, but it's, uh, I think it's wide enough for this type of work and the depth of field play is excellent, as you can see here at f1.4. Background looks really good. And I actually have it at f11 right now because I want the shutter speed to be around 1 50th of a second or so. And uh, I have it on auto ISO here. And uh, I'm using that 9 bot thing again, as you can see down here. So here's what I wanted to show you, right? If we turn to the right here, as I'm riding, you get this cool effect. That's what's so cool about using this 9 bot thing. You can get this amazing parallax, you know, but just check out this scene. How ridiculous. All right, so check out this cool view. I take photos here all the time to test lenses, but it's so cool to look at it from this perspective. <laughs> Now, that depth of field, the f1.4 depth of field, let me show you what that does. Check this out. Now you see how blurry the background is? That's that killer depth of field and minimum focus distance that you get with a lens like this. So the minimum focus distance is basically how close you can get to the lens and have it still focus. And you can see with this G-Badge 15 millimeter lens, I can get really close and show off a subject and get that nice 3D pop. So the next lens I wanted to show you is this Sigma 30mm f1.4 lens. And I just want to show you how this compares particularly to the 15mm f1.4. So it's double the focal length, uh, same fast f1.4 aperture. Looks like it's about 28 ounces. So we picked up a little bit of weight with this lens and we also picked up size. So it is definitely noticeably larger. All right, so here we are recording with the Sigma 30 millimeter f1.4 lens at f1.4, and notice at 30 millimeter, you could see that background separation is looking pretty good. You noticed um, originally when we were on that kit lens at about 33 millimeter, uh, the background separation wasn't there. You know, it was really sharp back there. It's much blurrier now. But watch when I hold up this 15 millimeter lens in front of the 30 millimeter lens, and now just look at that incredible background separation. You see that? It looks like butter back there. And that's because it's a higher focal length than 15 millimeter, but the same fast f1.4 aperture. And so this 30 millimeter is gonna give you a cool view with less distortion because it's not as wide of an angle. So if you remember on that 15 millimeter a minute ago, I was doing pretty much the same thing, but it looked a little bit distorted just because of how wide it was. More depth of field play here and less distortion. So this Sigma lens is fairly affordable. It's going for about $265 and the optical quality is excellent. And the autofocus system is also excellent. It's silent, works really well. All right, so the next lens I wanted to talk about is the new Sony PZ, which stands for power zoom, 10 to 20 millimeter G lens. So again, it has that G badge on there. So it's gonna be really high quality optics and build. And it has a power zoom lever here which is fantastic for video in particular, as you'll see in a second. And then of course it has this customizable button, uh, which is nice as well, uh, right on the lens there. So you can have another feature. Then it has the autofocus manual focus switch. Again, you get like a little bit more of these features with a premium lens. All right, so we're looking at about 24.5 ounces, not bad.
All right, so here we have the G-badged PZ 10 to 20 millimeter, and here's what 10 millimeter looks like. And again, just unbelievably wide, right? You saw the 11 millimeter, you saw the 15 millimeter, and you saw the 16 millimeter view. So now this is what 10 millimeter looks like. This is a nice one. It's really wide. Now it has a slower F4 aperture, so the background separation isn't gonna be the greatest, but you'll still get some if I hold the lens up here. Got a little bit of background blur, but you know, not as much. And you can see how the lens is like more distorted just because of this super wide angle view. So if we zoom it in, also because this is a power zoom lens that's G badged, the zoom is like absolute butter smooth and you can't hear it at all. I have the zoom speed set to slow, but the kit lens doesn't go slow like this. So the max aperture for this lens is f4 through the entire zoom range. So now I'm at 20 millimeter and it's still at f4. So now if I hold the product up, you will see the background blur a little bit more, see? So at 20 millimeter, notice how it's less distorted and the background is significantly more blurry. This is a pretty cool section with the rocks on either side. Kind of feels like a tunnel, it's like a valley. It's all mossy. It's actually a lot cooler temperature uh, dropped significantly here. So I'm just zooming out. Now this is at 14 millimeter. This is what 14 millimeter looks like. And you can see my fingers are stretching when I get to the corner. That's that wide angle effect. All right, so there's 10 millimeter. And then again, if I put my fingers out to the corner, you could see that stretch. depending on your needs, guys. This is super versatile with that power zoom. So if you're recording video and you want that nice buttery smooth uh, zoom, this would be a really good option. And if you want something ultra wide angle, this is a good option too. But again, aperture matters too. So this lens having that F4 aperture is a bit slower and it doesn't provide that background blur that you may or may not want. So, you know, depending on your needs, uh, if you're in really low light situations, F4 is gonna result in the ISO being a lot higher than a faster aperture lens. All right, so the next lens that I wanted to show you is the Sigma 56 millimeter F1.4 lens. Now, this lens is fantastic. It's one of my favorite lenses. And this lens is equivalent to about an 85 millimeter lens on a full frame. So what that means is it's optimized for like portrait photography, product photography. All right. So the 56 millimeter Sigma on the ZV-E10 looks like it weighs in at about 28.3 ounces total. You could see just how much tighter the crop is, but also look how killer the background separation is and the blur. So you can get really good separation from the background with a lens like this, which is why I suggested that it's great for portraits and product photography in particular. Again, if you hold the product up in front, as you can see here, I mean, that separation is absolutely killer. Guys, the next lens I want to show you is this 55 to 210 millimeter 
telephoto zoom lens. Now this lens goes for about $300. And like I said, it's a telephoto zoom lens. So it is large. So this lens is great if you're like going to the zoo and you want to get really awesome zoom shots of the animals when they're at a distance. You know, if you're shooting through a fence and things like that. All right, so this is weighing in at about 29.2 ounces. All right, so this is what 55 looks like. And again, this is a variable aperture zoom. So it's at f4.5 right now. So 55 millimeters, f4.5. So you can see the background separation isn't really the greatest. It's not super blurry, because remember, it's not f1.4 like it was on that 56 millimeter Sigma lens you saw a minute ago. This same type of shot looked way better with that Sigma lens because that background was super blurry. Mind you, I like blurry backgrounds. If you don't want a blurry background, then you might think this looks better. Instead of the ISO being at 100, the ISO right now is at 400 because again, the slower aperture. So it's a little bit harder for the light to get in there and the ISO needs to bump up. All right, so I can't really zoom in to 210 looking at myself with this lens. So I'm just gonna turn the camera around. All right, so here we are looking at my punching bag there. And again, this is at 55. So let me zoom in to 210 and show you that range. So that's 210 millimeter. That's 100 millimeter. And that's 55 millimeter. So again, you could see if that was like an animal out there, you'd be able to zoom in and get a good shot right on their head. It has optical stabilization as well. So it's fairly easy to hand hold this lens even at that 210 range. All right, guys, so another lens option is this Viltrox 13 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Now, this lens is not out yet. I just recently reviewed it, and I was super impressed at the optical quality. Probably going to end up going for about $400 or so once it's available, $430, something like that. So it's really affordable considering how wide and how fast the aperture is combined with the optical quality because it's killer optical quality. It's very, very good on this Viltrox lens. And as good as the Sony lenses are that I just showed you, um, they are significantly more money. Now, the 15 millimeter F1.4 is significantly lighter weight, though, than that Viltrox. So you always get something, you know, for your money. So this has more features, the G-Badge lens. Now, another lens I want to show you is this Viltrox 23 millimeter F1.4 lens. Now, if you remember what the Sigma 30 millimeter F1.4 lens looks like I showed you a minute ago. If you just need it a little bit wider than that, then you can go with the Viltrox 23 millimeter. It just depends on how much room you have. Like if, if you can't get the camera far enough away from you, for example, um, you could use a wider angle lens. So again, 30 millimeter, the, the, it just might be too tight, you know, and you can't get the camera any further. So you would need wider. So the 23 is a good option in that regard. All right, guys, so, so far, most of the lenses I showed you were prime lenses. Now, what that means is they don't zoom. So remember that kit lens, the 16 to 50 kit lens has that zoom in it. But like most, like I was saying, most of the other lenses I showed you are just prime lenses. So they don't zoom. So they're not as versatile in that way. So I have a couple special mention lenses that I don't actually have on hand right now, all of these, but I just want to show you that there are turnkey solutions and zoom lenses like the 16 to 50 are super versatile. And if you're just starting out, that might be the way to go. However, the downside of these zoom lenses is they are much larger and they're significantly heavier. So let me just show you a few real quick and then we will wrap this video up. So the first lens is the Sony E 18 to 135. Now this is kind of like a kit lens, but it's more expensive. It actually goes for about $650. So it's not exactly cheap, but 18 to 135 is a tremendous range and that's extremely versatile. Now, again, the lens is much larger, so it's a burden, you know, more of a burden to carry around. It's not going to work as good trying to use it as a vlog lens and stuff like that. So that's what you need to consider. Now, the next lens is a G badged lens. So it's the 16 to 55 F 2.8 G lens. Now that is a fast aperture. 
uh, constant aperture. So the previous kit lens, the 18 to 135, has that variable aperture. So as you zoom, the aperture changes. Now this more expensive G-badged lens is 16 to 55, and it's a constant f2.8, so the, the aperture doesn't change when you zoom. So that's another feature. However, this Sony lens is honestly really expensive. It goes for $1,400. That's a little too much money, in my opinion, for that lens, but it's a really high quality G-badged option that I wanted to make you aware of. So another option that I really like is the Sony E 16 to 70 F4 Zeiss lens. Now that lens is also expensive. It goes for about $800, but it's a lot cheaper than that, you know, 16 to 55 F 2.8. So the cool thing about the 16 to 70 is you get more, a more versatile zoom range uh, and you get optical stabilization. And it also has an F4 constant aperture. However, that F4 is a bit slower than the F2.8, so you get that. But with the F4, the lens is actually smaller and lighter and the image quality is spectacular on that lens. And I have reviews of all these special mention lenses, by the way, guys, they're all linked below in the description if you wanna check out sample photos and sample video. I just didn't want this video to be crazy long. So one of the best options out there for versatility, in my opinion, is the Tamron 17-70 to f2.8 lens. Now, this lens has optical stabilization. It's reasonably affordable at about $800 the downside, it's large and heavy. So you're definitely carrying weight when you use that lens. But 17 to 70 and a constant f2.8 aperture is killer. I mean, you can get unbelievable depth of field play um, and the optical stabilization that's built in is very useful for a lens like that. So if you just want to invest in one lens and you don't mind having that little extra weight, I would consider the Tamron 17 to 70 for that turnkey solution that'll do pretty much anything. So the last lens I wanted to bring up is the telephoto zoom lens known as the Sony E70 to 350 millimeter lens. Now this lens goes for about $1,000. It does have a variable aperture zoom range, but that does keep the lens significantly smaller than if it was a constant aperture lens. So Sony's trying to keep this as lightweight as possible, but 70 to 350 is an unbelievable zoom range. So that telephoto, ability is just remarkable, as you saw on the 55 to 210 earlier. Now imagine 210, 350, big difference. So that if you need something for birding, uh, the zoo, like I was saying with the 55 to 210, this is like the high quality option that I would highly recommend. It's a very high quality telephoto zoom lens. And uh, it definitely makes the list here. And I loved it when I reviewed it. So if you wanna see what that can do, be sure to check out that review, guys. All that stuff's linked below. All right guys, so the last lens that I'm gonna mention in this video is gonna be the Sony 18 to 105 power zoom lens. Now this is an F4 lens, so it has a constant F4 aperture throughout the zoom range, and we're talking an 18 to 105 zoom range. So that's a really very versatile range, and it has that butter smooth, zoom and it also has optical stabilization built in. Now it's a constant f4 aperture so it's a little bit slower but that keeps the lens a little bit smaller than it would be if it was a faster aperture. Now the downside to this lens is it's pretty large and it's pretty heavy. It's a really good option for video users in particular and I highly recommend checking it out. My review is linked below if you want to check out all the sample footage and photos and stuff. So guys, I really hope this video helped you visually see like what the different lenses can do for you. Um, you know, those wide angle views, the telephoto views, uh, the zoom range that some lenses have, for example, the optical quality, um, as you saw in the kit lens, the kit lens isn't as sharp, you know, the 16 to 50, it's not as sharp. It looks like more washed out, you know, when there's like a bright light behind you, it just doesn't have the same optical quality. And then when you step up to the G badge lenses, they're just punchy contrast, sharp corner to corner, very little distortion, things like that. So uh, it's a lot to think about, but I hope this video gave you some serious food for thought, let's say. And if you guys have questions, if you don't know what lens to get, um, I'm hoping this video will help you make that decision on your own, but be sure to ask questions below the video, guys. I'm always happy to help you, uh, you know, figure out what lens you might want and, and things like that. I mean, if you're a subscriber of my channel, you know I pretty much always get back to you if you ask questions below. So that about wraps up this video. And again, I really hope you guys got what you were looking for. And thanks again for watching my video. Take care.